Many great ideas came to famous scientists and artists while they were asleep. They literally dreamt them up. What's in a dream? Some of the best ideas ever. People create things all the time. Inventors, scientists, musicians, writers. But where do they get their ideas? Sometimes it's just sitting down at a desk. Other times the inspiration comes from something they notice in everyday life. Every now and then an idea strikes them out of the blue. Often though, they just dream them up. Some of the best ideas ever have come to people in their dreams. Take Larry Page. He dreamt he was downloading the whole internet and storing it on PCs. When he woke up, he did the maths to see if it was possible. He found it wasn't, but it led him to the idea of saving all the data in links, which in turn led to the creation of Google. Although Einstein published his special theory of relativity in his mid-twenties, he actually dreamt it when he was a teenager. In his dream, he came across a herd of cows huddled behind an electric fence. When the farmer turned on the fence, he saw the cows jump back all at once. However, when he went to talk to the farmer, the farmer said he saw them jump away one by one from the fence. The event looked different, depending on where you were stood. Back in 1865, the German chemist August Kekulé woke up from a strange dream of a snake curling into a circle and biting its own tail. Kekulé had been working hard at the time to discover the true chemical structure of benzene, a problem that continually eluded scientists' understanding. Kekulé's dream helped him to realize that benzene's structure formed a ring and paved the way for a new understanding of organic chemistry, earning him a title of nobility in Germany. Such examples of amazing creativity have led researchers to study the act of dreaming and whether or not it can be organized to solve problems on a more regular and predictable basis. But first, how do we dream and what scientifically do they consist of? A dream can be explained as a succession of sensations, emotions, ideas and images that occur involuntary in a person's mind during certain stages of sleep. It's during the REM, or rapid eye movement stage of sleep, that dreams usually occur, because this is when brain activity is high and most resembles that of being awake. The REM stage is controlled by the reticular activating system, whose circuits run from the brainstem through the thalamus to the cortex. The limbic system in the midbrain deals with emotions in both waking and dreaming and includes the amygdala, which is mostly associated with fear and is especially active during dreams. The cortex is responsible for the content of dreams, including the monsters we flee from, the people we meet, or experiences such as flying, falling, or swimming. Since people are very visual by nature, the visual cortex at the back of the brain is especially active. Least active are the frontal lobes, which may explain why we can be so uncritical during dreams, accepting crazy events as if they were real until we wake up. Going back around 5,000 years ago in Mesopotamia, the earliest recorded dreams were documented on clay tablets. In the Roman and Greek periods, people believed dreams were messages sent directly by the gods and predicted the future. Some cultures practiced dream incubation to try to prophesy the future. Today, we study dream incubation to try to find out new ways of problem solving. In a study at Harvard Medical School, students focused on a problem, such as an unsolved homework assignment, before going to sleep each night for a week. They found it was possible to come up with novel solutions in dreams, which an outside observer said had objectively solved the problem. The research concluded that anything, maths, musical composition, business decisions, could be solved during dreaming. Tips for problem solving while dreaming. First think of the problem before bed. Place something on your bedside table that makes an image of the problem. If it's a personal problem, it might be the person you have conflict with. 
If you're an artist, it might be a blank canvas. If you're a scientist, the device you're working on that's half assembled or a mathematical proof you've been writing versions of. It might just work. All this gives new meaning to the saying, dream up an idea. It's why sometimes we should take our dreams seriously. They may hold the key to a breathtaking innovation.